Today, I'll be reading Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 16. Again, that's Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 16. And it reads, Therefore, remember that you once, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcised by what is called uncircumcised, made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you, want, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself in our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of the commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. Thank you, Josiah. Uh, Great to see everybody here today and being able to worship God. That's always a great thing. So fall festival is coming up. Joshua already let you know that's not optional. So do go ahead and sign up in the back. Um, Also, Mission Sunday is coming. And so that's always a great thing every year. And that's the one time when uh, it it takes a little bit of saving and a little bit of looking forward because we try and do everything for missions in one Sunday. And... uh, so that's going to be a presentation about what all we're doing, and that's going to be the first part of November. But I tell you that so that you can start the saving part now, so that uh, you're just aware of that. And that's going to be a great day when we talk about all the things that are outside of Mesa that our congregation is doing. So what does it feel like to be home? What does your place look like? We all have an idea of what that is, about what home is, and hopefully you have good feelings about home. I I don't know whether you do or not. I think some people maybe didn't have such a good home, and so they may not have good feelings. But a lot of times we have good feelings, and so home is a good place. It's a place where we feel comfortable. It's a place where we go, and there's people there, and they care about us, and they love us, but, you know, this is a two-story, and... There's more one stories around here, so maybe this was what your home looks like. Well, there's not many of those in Arizona either, but okay, so here's the, maybe your home actually looks more like this. (laughs) So I don't know which one of those three makes it where, okay, yeah, that's my home. Uh, But whatever it is, It's the way you want it because you have done the things or not done the things that make it the way it is. And it's exactly the way that you would like for it to be. And so all of the things that you do and all of the people that are there come together and say, you know, this is where we feel safe. This is where we belong. This is where we're comfortable. This is where we're accepted. And this is what it looks like. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. If you're happy with it, you're the one that lives there. And so that's great. Um, it, it all is a good thing. I, keep, I see the same thing with people coming to church. And so people will come and they'll say, well, we're looking for a church. Okay, well, what are you looking for? Well, we're looking for a small, large church that is contemporarily traditional in all the things where I grew up. Okay, I recognize that. Almost invariably, they are looking for the place where they grew up. Why? Because that's a better way, but because it's familiar because we've been around it, because it's common, because it's the thing that makes us feel comfortable. It's the thing that makes us feel safe. It's where we first encountered God. And so it's the one that says, this is the place where we belong and where we understand each other. It doesn't even matter what accent you have. 
uh, where, wherever we are. It's familiar, you get that warm feeling. And so we want to talk a little bit about that warm feeling, about that comfortableness, and, and about what happens with this, partly with home, but also with church. We're going to look at Ephesians today, and in Ephesians chapter 1, he talks about all the blessings of God and about how great those are. And then he talks about the body of Christ and, and how great it is to have that. And then in chapter 2, he starts with how terrible and awful we have been, and, but the grace of God came, and the grace of God was able to bring salvation, to bring forgiveness, to bring redemption to us. And then he starts again in verse 11 with a whole new thing. And he says, but remember at one time. And so he's going backwards. He's going back to the place where you were. But remember at one time you were Gentiles. Remember at one time you were separated from Christ because they had no connection. Remember at one time you didn't have any promises. Remember at one time there was no history of a loving God. Remember you had no heroes of faith in your family. There was no kings. There was no prophets. There were no kingdoms. There was no special relationship with God. You were alien. I don't mean from outer space. I mean, you were somebody who doesn't fit, somebody who doesn't belong. Because God had made no place for you there whatsoever at all. Today, we don't use alien. We say illegal or undocumented or something like that. But that's the thing, that's the phrase that the Bible uses. And so he goes over several things. He says, you were separated. You were separated from God. You were Gentile, you'd never had any covenant with God before. And so we're separated from Christ. We were alienated from the fellowship of Israel, from all the relationship God had had with those people. They were God's chosen people, but I'm not Jewish. It wasn't promises to me. And chances are you aren't either. And so it wasn't promises to you. And so we were all left out of that. So we were alienated from that. You were strangers to any kinds of covenant or promises or anything that Israel had. And so we didn't have a link there. We were with no hope and we were without God and we were far away. Well, that's, boy, what a letdown after chapter one and all the blessings in chapter two and all the grace and then all of a sudden you get here and you've got, okay, you were nothing. But I like the, but now you have been brought near by the blood of Christ. He is our peace. He made us both into one. The problem that separated us, it, it, the problem was from God. And so the problem that separated us and what caused a problem from God is God had given a law to Israel. They were God's chosen people, and he had given them a law and told them how to behave and told them how to be right, and the rest of us had nothing. And so we were just left up on our own, and uh, so it's, you know, be good. I'm not going to tell you what's right. I'm not going to tell you what's wrong. Just be good. Okay. I hope that works with your children. It didn't work with mine, uh, but I always said, be good as if they would understand what that meant. And we don't understand it any better or do much better with it. And so there was a problem because God had done all kinds of things for them. God had given them a law and told them how to behave and what to do and how to have sacrifices. God had given them land. He had given them promises. He had given them blessings. He had chosen them. He had won battles for them. He had established kings for them, and that caused them to be divided from everybody else, all the people who weren't. We were the guys they were fighting. We were the guys on the other side. We were the ones who were the unblessed. We were the ones who, and we had nothing connecting there. And so what divided everyone else, because they felt so far superior, was that law. And that law, 
contained in commandments and ordinances as he describes here in this section of Scripture, he says Christ took it out of the way. He nailed it to a cross. God changed the rules. And he made it completely different. Jesus was sent to his people, the Jews, but he died for all people of the world. And what a huge difference that is. He broke down that dividing wall of hostility, and it calls it hostile. It was a dividing wall contained in commandments. And so we, we sometimes get confused with this. He broke that down. He took it away. It's no longer part of us. And yet sometimes today you still see people referring back to the Ten Commandments and, oh, well, we keep the Ten. No. If you're going to keep those, you're going to have to keep everything else, all of the sacrifices, all of the others. He took away all of those things, and so he broke all of that down. Now, Jesus didn't say, okay, well, it's okay to kill now because obviously thou shalt not kill is gone. No. Jesus came back with, and I don't want you to hate either. It's not okay to kill, but I don't want you to hate. And so all of those things were taken away, and they had to be taken away so that all of us were able to be part of Christ. And he made a new covenant with people. And a lot of times we get confused about that. If you order a car from England and bring it over here, and you decide you're going to drive, well, obviously the steering wheel is on the wrong side, and so in England they drive on the left-hand side of the road. And when you recover from the accident, and they ask you, why were you driving on the wrong side of the road? You would say, well, I wasn't on the wrong side. I have an English car. Therefore, I drive on the left side of the road. And they're like, but no, you don't understand. Your English car is not in England. If you had it in England, the laws there would apply. But since you brought it to America, you have to follow the rules here. And so there's a different covenant. There's a different law. There's a different way. And that's what he's trying to get across here. He says, you know, somewhere there's got to be this huge difference in understanding that we don't do things that way anymore. And so we have to understand that now it's different. He came to create one new man, all people in Christ. There's not a Jewish way to be saved, and there's a separate Christian way to be saved. It's all people come to Christ. Everyone is under the same thing. You see, back many years ago, before Christ, there was a difference. The Jews had their way of being able to come. But since Christ came, he took away all of that and made all people then able to come to him, but they all come to him in a different system. He made peace between Jew and Gentile. He reconciled us through the blood of the cross. And then the last phrase in that is, he killed hostility. Don't you find that such an odd way of saying that? How do you kill hostility? You do violence to violence? But that's what he's saying. The thing that was hostile between us, the thing that made one person better than another, legitimately better than another because they were favored by God, Jesus took out of the way, and he says, now I favor all of you. Now all of you are able to have the grace of God. All of you are have, able to have this favor. And so he created one new man that looks different. And it doesn't matter what race it is, and it doesn't matter what country you come from, and it doesn't matter what covenant you might have been under in the past. Whether it was one from Moses or one from Noah or one from Abraham, he says, we all have one in Christ. Well, it seems like that would solve everything, right? Everything would be good. And yet, as you read the New Testament, it doesn't seem to have solved a lot of things. There are huge disagreements over this. 
because they didn't quite know how to handle all of this. And so Paul and Barnabas have been going to Gentile churches and telling them this and, and okay, we don't have to follow Jewish law. We just, you know, do what Christians do. Well, absolutely. Well, the people back in Jerusalem, they don't like that so much. No, no. You need to keep all the things. Well, especially circumcision. You need, might need to keep a prayer time. You might need to keep a fast day. And so it didn't create peace. I mean, actually it did, but we get so worked up about our viewpoint on things. And what happened was they finally had to have a big conference together just to be able to talk about this and to decide, you know, what happened here? And, and how do we resolve all of this? And they finally came together and they said, well, you know, here's what scripture says. And Here's what our experience is, that the grace of God is going to more and more people. And they could see that they needed to make a decision. And so they made a decision based on spirit. It wasn't majority vote. Because obviously there would be many more of the Jews in Jerusalem that would want that. It was not the weakest it was not the most upset, but they decided to write a letter in verse 28 of Acts 15, and they said it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to make any further laws that they would have to keep. Only three, abstain from things sacrificed to idols, abstain from blood, in other words, don't eat it and abstain from sexual immorality. Those three things are basic. The first two are fairly easy. The third one our society seems to struggle with. But those are the basic ones. And they said the rest of it is all found in Christ. And so just follow Christ. And it makes peace between all people. And he follows up in, in verse 17 when he says, And he came and he preached peace to you who are far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure is being joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. And so he came and he preaches peace to both groups because he preaches the same thing. We all do the same thing, every single person. It doesn't matter what race you are. It doesn't matter where you've been from. It doesn't matter which religion you have had before. It all comes together in Christ. And we all have access to him in one spirit. And we are not strangers or aliens. It is that one spirit that we share. And we all come together in this. But now we have a fellowship with the saints. But now we are members of God's household. And it's a brand new house. It's not like one that we saw before. It's not like one that we go back to and say, oh, well, when I was a kid, we used to do... Well, it's new in Christ, and so that's what he's trying to say. We are built on this foundation of apostles and prophets, Jesus being the cornerstone. And so, yes, there's some history to it, but it's all founded on Jesus because he is the cornerstone. And it grows into this temple in the Lord where God is able to come and be with us, and he lives in the same house with us, and we're able to share that and be part of that. We're God's kids. And so we didn't start there. We're adopted into that family. We're adopted into that part because we weren't part of the original family. Not descendants of Abraham. There was, you know, a few other people along the way. In order to be adopted into a family, it has to be a group or a family. We don't adopt ourselves into not being strangers, into not being alien. Somebody else has to declare you that. Somebody else has to say you're home again. And they have to reach out and they have to ask. 
And so God has been reaching out to us through Jesus, and he preached peace, that we are able to have peace with him. And he sent his spirit so that we can be part of him. And that spirit makes us fit together into this one family, this one body of Christ, this one place where we all fit, where we all belong. In Romans 8 and verse 14, and I'm going to switch to NIV here just because the language. He says, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. And we get that Spirit from God, and so we become children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. For by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our Father that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. And so those who are led by the Spirit are children of God. We share that one Spirit, and that's what he seems to talk about. And it isn't about where you grew up. It isn't about the things that you like. It isn't about the size of the church, it isn't about the color of the car, it isn't about the school that you went to, it isn't about do you like Fords or Chevys, it, all those things that would divide us or which team you like, we share in one Spirit of God. And this Spirit we have received that makes us sons. And then we are able to cry, Abba, Father. This is Daddy, Father. Because that's what he has brought us to. And the Spirit even says, you're children of God, and children are heirs. They inherit a new home. He brings us into this new family, and we enjoy all things together. And it isn't like any other family you have ever had. Because we didn't start there. We didn't start in a good place. We begin again in a new building with a new relationship in a new family because adoption is never about going back to what's familiar. Right? Adoption is never about going back to what's familiar. And so if you're being adopted, it's not into what you like. It's not into a past. It's not into something else. It's into a new place, into a new home, and we need that feeling of home, like we belong there, like it's a place where we fit because we've been invited. And you can tell by the way it smells, and you can tell that we can relax, and you can feel the air. The air is different in Phoenix than it is anywhere else. I mean, you can just tell. The difference between Houston and Phoenix Really, I mean, you just walk outside and go, nope, this is not Phoenix. This is hot. <laughs> this is humid. And uh, you can just tell, even by the air that's around you, what home is. I want you to know that about God, that it isn't about past. It's about forever. And so we need to look for our new family as if we're looking for an adoption. Because that's what Christ does to bring us all in together. So that we leave behind all those other things and we come into Christ. And Christ is the one who makes all this different. I saw this. I am a child of his own. This God-man who wrapped his holiness around my sin-stained existence. And renamed me. And he calls us his child, and he calls us holy, and he calls us home. And we don't have to go back home to get there, because Jesus made a way for us to feel at home with each other. It's not like where any of us came from before. And so it's God's place. We are his family. We are one spirit with him. And so let's never try to go back to, well, something that's familiar that I knew before. Was it perfect then? 
well, we always think it was because we've forgotten all the bad stuff. But he says, I want you to come forward to the point where you're adopted as children into a new family, into a new place where you fit now. And it's all done the same way. Children are born, right? And then Jesus talks about a rebirth or about being born again. And there's a born of water and spirit into the family of God, which is the repentance and baptism for all people. Whether they're Gentiles, whether they're Jews, for everyone. And then it brings them together and they're added to each other and it makes them where they are a place to belong because they've been added to each other. And that's what I hope you share this morning as we talk about Jesus and talk about what he's done, that there's not a past that would separate us in any way, but that we are all able to be part of this and he has wrapped his holiness around us and we find forgiveness in Jesus and we are able to be at home with him. Let this be a place that's familiar. Let this be a place that has the grace of God and the Spirit of God that filters through all of us to share his love and to share his grace. If you don't have that this morning, please talk to us. Please talk to somebody, maybe the person next to you, or maybe come up and...